point, Daniel Cooksley asks a question. Does the panel agree that until the ATO starts to enforce on debts, directors generally will not deal with the issues of, of solvency? Simon? Yeah, look, I, I think what this whole COVID experience has proven is that the ATO have been a significant driver of insolvency work in the past. Um, you know, one thing we know that is consistent throughout the whole process is the ATO have not been very aggressive, at, if, if, if at all, in terms of recovering their debts since, um, since the bushfires in 2019. So what we have seen is a complete drop in, in, in insolvency formula work because of that. So there's no doubt that uh, and whatever that percentage is, is 20, 30, 40 percent of all insolvency work is driven by ATO behaviour. There's no doubt that the ATO have a significant impact on the level of, of formal appointments in insolvency. Can I, ask, can, I, uh, can I speak yeah. to Bill's comment there? Yeah. Because I think it ties into what I think it ties into to Daniel's question as well. Uh, the ATO are undoubtedly a major instigator of insolvencies. I mean, they're the relative anima of the industry. Nothing flushes out insolvency like the ATO. Okay. But Bill's point, Bill's point is is well made as well. Other creditors creditors can force the issue, and we're just not seeing that happening at the moment. And uh, I don't think our industry does a good enough job advertising the restructuring component of what we do. I think there's very much a concern amongst businesses that it's liquidation, and that's the only option available to them. And I think there's an education piece to be done by by our industry on that 